real quick. All right, so the last time I showed you guys, I told you to separate it, right? Now guess what? Remember we're talking about inequalities, that means we can separate it on the left side and we separate it on the right side, right? And that was when you had an inequality or an equation. Well, when you have a compound, a quick way to do this, rather than separating it into two different inequalities, like I told you before, by covering up one side and covering up the other side, another way we can do this is actually, um, remember when you guys saw an equation, I said whatever you do on the left side, you have to do on the right side, right? Yes. Right, you have to do it on both sides. Well, here in inequality, you can kind of say you have three equal parts. Oops. I don't know why I'm doing that through the seven. So whatever you do in the middle to get rid of, right, we want to solve for our variable. So what do we do in the middle? We have to do to both ends of our graph. And you guys see what I do right now. So if I need to get rid of my P, I need to get my P by itself. So I need to undo what's happening to my P. My P is being multiplied by 3 and added by 7. So to undo addition, I can subtract a 7. Right? But now we have a left and a right. So I need to subtract 7 from both of those. Does everybody see that, what I did? So now I have a negative 12 is less than 3p, which is less than or equal to 15. Does anybody have any questions on how I did that? It's just a different way. You could use the previous method I used before, but this is a quicker way. Then, now I need to get rid of multiplying by 3. So to undo multiplication by 3, I need to divide by 3. And since I'm dividing my middle by 3, I need to divide both sides by 3. Right? Just remember these little... So therefore, negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4, is less than P, which is less than 5. So therefore, I have negative 4 is less than p, which is less than 5. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. oh, that is amazing. So how do you graph this? Uh -huh. Well, guys, there's two ways you can graph it. You could go back to saying graph that, p less than 5, and then graph that, p is greater than negative 4. Notice how I said the variable first, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can just think about it. Once you guys get good at this, Remember, P represents all the numbers that are going to make this true. So P has to be greater than negative 4, but less than 5. So I'll go to make two points. Negative 4. So I go to negative 4, and I go to 5. Oh, that's less than or equal to, right? So that's filled in. So all the values that are greater than negative 4 but less than or equal to 5. Well, it's going to be all your points right there. <sighs> Ta-da! Got all that? Yay! Yeah. 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 Yeah.